the game. Hi, I'm Kelsa Dickey, the CEO of the Financial Coach Academy and my financial coaching business, Fiscal Fitness Phoenix. My coaching journey began more than a decade ago with me helping people for free from my dining room table. What was once a little business of mine has grown into a seven-figure company that employs a team of people. My goal is simple, to help you fall more and more in love with financial coaching. I believe financial coaching is the most rewarding way to make a living. If you are an aspiring financial coach or have been coaching for years, I'm here to help you create a business you love that gets your clients massive results. Let's get to it. Hey, Financial Coach, welcome back to episode 33 of the Financial Coach Academy podcast. As you can likely see or hear, I'm not your usual coach. Coach Kelsa Dickey. I am subbing for her this summer while she is taking a much deserved break with her family and spending her time at her new lake house in Michigan. So you are going to be with me for the next four episodes as I fill in for her. My name is Jill Emanuel. I am the lead financial coach of Fiscal Fitness Phoenix and one of the coaches and mentors over the Financial Coach Academy, co-creator of the Financial Coaching Toolkit, and the lead coach of our elite coaching program. So I'm going to be here with you today, and I'm super excited to dive in because today's topic, I'm going to be sharing with you my own personal journey with financial coaching, the journey that ultimately took me from being totally broke and in debt and changed the entire trajectory of my life, leading me here to being the director of programming and coaching with Fiscal Fitness. Phoenix and the Financial Coach Academy. So I'm really excited to dive in and share with you that story and hopefully shift your perspective maybe on some of the things that you uh, might have some biases or thoughts about when you are talking to some of the clients that come your way. So stick with me. We're going to dive in. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Shanna Roberson. She left us a review on the podcast. Thank you so much, Shanna. She says, Kelsa is over delivering in every single episode. I love this so much. I need to take notes every single time because there is so much to use and implement. Thank you so much, Shanna, for leaving us this review and for listening or watching on YouTube. Uh, If you love the show, please do drop us a review and let us know. It really helps the podcast and the YouTube channel, and we appreciate you all for doing so. So thank you so, so much, Shanna. All right, guys, before we dive in, I wanted to share with you about our group coaching program that's opening up for enrollment this August. This is the Financial Coach Mastermind, and it probably isn't something that you've heard us talk much about in the podcast because we only accept new clients into this once per year and that is coming up very soon as i said in august we're opening enrollment from august 17th to the 24th so you're going to want to mark that on your calendars be paying attention to your emails for that one week only we are going to be accepting new members into the mastermind this is really the best place for any financial coach who wants to make progress in their business. You guys, I can shout it from the rooftops. We see thousands of financial coaches or people who want to be financial coaches inside of the Financial Coaches Unite Facebook group. And those that are really killing it in their business, those that are growing, that are consistently taking action, that are engaging and have more clients, you guys, they are in the mastermind. And so I know it can be tough sometimes to make an investment in yourself or know if it's the right move or if it is not, but the mastermind is where it's at. There is so much support happening there to help you grow your business. There are regular calls, group coaching calls, specific topic calls, helping you with your marketing and your niche and your offers. Uh, There is just an incredible community of very active coaches who are taking action within their businesses that are going to be there to lean on and to get to know and support you. So I highly recommend hopping on over to the website. You're going to want to go to financialcoachacademy.com, click on community, and then the middle option there will say join a paid coaching mastermind. And that is where you're going to be able to sign up to be notified when enrollment opens. So get on the wait list. Again, enrollment is going to be open August 17th, to the 24th, if you are serious about growing your financial coaching business, you absolutely need to be in the mastermind. And so make sure you hop over there and get signed up. All right, now for today's episode, I am going to be sharing with you my own journey of going through financial coaching and how it literally changed the entire trajectory of my life. And I really wanna share this with you for a couple of reasons. 
One, I believe that my own personal story really powerfully shows how truly life-changing the work is that we do as financial coaches. And I want you to steal my belief, right? If you are still thinking, I think people need this, but you don't have that wholehearted belief, steal the belief that I have through listening to my story and knowing how much this changed my life and how much it will change the lives of the clients that you work with. The second reason that I wanted to share this with you today, and I think that this is a really huge one, so I want you to come into this with really open ears, open hearts, really an open mind to be able to consider possibly a new perspective than the one that you have already. And it is this, that I hear from a lot of coaches, especially newer coaches, but also plenty of veteran coaches too, that will say things like they feel really out of integrity selling coaching to someone who has no money that they feel like it is wrong, that it is not right, that they can't justly uh, ask for someone to pay them when they see how much they are struggling. And there's also some very strong viewpoints around asking someone, and maybe not asking, but even being okay with someone putting the cost of coaching on a credit card. I have seen coaches say flat out, I will absolutely not let a client do that. It is not an option. It is out of integrity. I would never have a client put their coaching on a credit card. And you guys, I want to share this story with you because that is exactly what I did. And it is the thing that allowed myself and my husband to completely change our lives. And if we had not had that option, I can't imagine where we would be today. It would look very, very different. And so I wanted to share this story with you so that possibly you can explore maybe the nuance of this for yourself and what this might look like for the clients who are desperately seeking solutions and help that you have to offer. So, all right, let's do a little flashback. Uh, Before I was a financial coach, I actually had an entirely different career. I had graduated college with my doctorate in pharmacy. I was a clinical pharmacist, moved to Arizona straight out of graduation, packing up all that I could in my car and driving out here without knowing a soul. Um, And I wound up meeting my husband a couple of months later. Uh, He was a guy from the farm in Nebraska where I had just come from. And so it was just an easy and natural fit. And we hit it off right from the beginning. Uh, We were married within two years of meeting. We were pregnant with our first child shortly after. And it was like, boom, 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 right? Life was happening and life was moving. Uh, At the time, my husband was working in IT as a project manager. And I was, like I said, working as a clinical pharmacist. And When our second child came along shortly after, I had cut back my hours to working only part-time, trying to spend more time home with them, and my husband was our primary source of income. Well, we had been doing okay financially. We both thought we had great careers. We had really, you know, prestigious degrees. You know, I had a doctorate. My husband had his master's. We kind of did everything quote unquote, right. You know, what we were told was the right thing to do. Got out of college though, we both had substantial student loan debt. We both had never really been taught any personal finance principles by our parents. Money just wasn't a thing that was regularly talked about. What we were taught was just go and get a good job, earn good money and you'll be okay. And we were okay, right? Quote unquote, okay. We were doing okay. We had credit card debt, but we were always managing it. We were always like, focused on earning a little bit more, getting a little ahead, and then putting a little more back on. And I think this is a very normal cycle for a great majority of people that they find themselves going in and out of this cycle and having the mentality that the answer is just to earn more, right? Get a good career, earn more. That's what we're told. And my husband and I were living in this way um, until my husband lost his job. And when something like this happens, it is traumatic in so many different ways. And for us, it really is that moment where we look back now and we say this moment was probably the most pivotal moment of our lives to date, that uh, him losing his job changed everything. It took what was an okay situation and tipped it over on its head. And very quickly, we discovered we were falling farther and farther behind. We thought it'll be a month or two. He'll get out there, start interviewing. He'll have another job. We'll 
you know, make ends meet till then. And what we thought would be a few months turned into six months and then a year and then 18 months. And my husband went into a pretty serious depression. He did not want to go back to working in IT. He was miserable doing it, but didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. And as we were trying to do everything that we knew to do to financially survive, I was working 70 to 80 hours per week. And even despite that and making different sacrifices, we were falling further and further behind each and every month. More money was landing on the credit card simply to pay the bills, to buy the groceries, to put gas in the car. And the stress and impact of that on our lives and on our relationship was just growing, growing and growing every single month, getting more stressful, causing more anxiety, causing more arguments, causing more tears. I just remember this stage of life that I was crying every single day because of the pressure of all of it and not knowing how we were possibly going to turn it around. And I will always remember the day I came out of work. I opened the app on my phone to check our bank account balance. It was something I obsessively did all of the time because I was so worried about our money. And I looked at the bank account and we were overdrawn again. And I remember calling my husband and I was mad. I was just really mad, mad at him, mad at me, mad at the situation that we were in, just mad at the world that like, how did we wind up here as really smart people, intelligent people who did things all the right way, right? Like what we were told was the right way to do. And yet we were still in this horrible situation. Here we were three days from payday, zero dollars in the bank. In fact, we were overdrawn, right? And I remember calling my husband and telling him, do not spend any money. Do not go to the gas station. Do not buy a soda. No going to the, the grocery store. Like whatever you do, do not spend another dollar. I don't want another overdraft charge. I was so mad. And I hung up the phone with him and we really had not told anyone about what was happening with us, right? Like and that's the same that your clients are experiencing. They don't want to tell anyone how bad things are, how much stress they're carrying, how much they just feel like they are on the edge of the whole world collapsing around them. And in this moment, I just needed to tell someone. And I called one of my best friends and she picked up the phone. And I just remember, you know, the waterfall started. I was bawling and I could hardly get the words out. But I said, I, I think that we're going to get divorced. I think we're going to file bankruptcy. I think we're going to lose our house. I don't know what's going to happen to our kids. I don't know how we got here. There's no way out that I can see. And I remember her saying, before you do anything crazy, there's someone that you need to talk to. And that person was Kelsa Dickey with Fiscal Fitness. And I just always, I will always remember that day. <laughs> been telling the story for a decade now and it still gets me choked up but I will always remember that day as the day that changed my life and he, my friend suggested that I talk to Kelsa and she said she's a financial coach and I thought you don't get it we don't have any money I thought she was talking about a financial advisor and like oh we should go to someone and we can invest some money and they'll help us turn it around I had never heard of financial coaching I did not know this was a thing. I didn't know there was someone in the world that their entire job was to help people like me figure out how to make things better with their money. I had no idea that this existed. And that is our job as financial coaches is to let people know we exist because they want the help with it and they don't know who to talk to. Right. And that is the place that we serve in the world. And I remember, uh, scheduling that very first coaching session, I had no money. I was overdrawn in my bank account. I used a credit card that was nearly maxed out and I booked the session before I talked to my husband, which I know a lot of coaches get very preachy and they say, I would never, ever, ever work with someone that didn't talk to their husband and didn't have their spouse on board. But listen, I had to do something, right? I had to do something. And I told my husband afterwards, we're going to this coaching session. I paid for it. We need someone to help us. He was not thrilled with the idea. He did not want to go and talk to someone about it. It was a very embarrassing subject. There was a lot of shame. There was a lot of tension. We were arguing. 
And I said, we just, we're not solving this on our own, right? We're not solving it on our own. We need someone to help us. And those thoughts really were what I needed to take action and to do something different, right? That knowledge that what we were doing wasn't going to get us any further ahead, that every month, despite so much effort, I was spending hours every week working down our budget, trying to get ahead, planning for the next bills, and we were still falling farther and farther behind. And I remember we had our very first coaching session, and it's sort of a joke now, but at the time it was not a joke, but I cried the entire way through, and Kelsa would always see me walk in for coaching sessions after that and immediately grab the box of tissues and set them right in front of me because I would just cry and it was you know the tears of the burden and the stress but also the relief and the hope that I wound up having by having someone to talk this through with me and to show us the way and to know that we weren't so alone and that we weren't total idiots when it came to our money that there were just simply some new things that we needed to do to turn things around and some new systems to put in place and some new ways of looking at things that could show us the light at the end of the tunnel that we could not see on our own. And when Kelsa offered us more coaching after that very first coaching session and told us the price, it felt impossible. It felt impossible. I had no idea how we were going to pay for it. And my husband, you know, he was slightly more on board after this first coaching session and seeing what it was about, but he also just was not bought into this idea of investing money, thousands of dollars that we did not have. And we literally made the decision to move forward with coaching with no idea how we were going to pay for it. I just trusted that Kelsa said she could help us and that we could figure it out. And I needed so badly to believe that we could make things better, that I was willing to do and pay almost anything just not to feel this weight and this stress and burden anymore. And so we actually started by putting coaching on a credit card, again, a nearly maxed out credit card for the first month because we had no idea how we were gonna pay for it. We were overdrawn in the account every single month. There was no extra money to put towards coaching, you know? And after the first month, we had money in the bank. It was the first time in probably a year that we got to the end of a month and we actually had hundreds of dollars left in our bank account and not overdrawn. And it was really where we started to see that everything could be different. That if we just kept on this path and we kept taking the steps that Kelsa was advising to us, that we could make progress and turn this around. And we could not have done that without paying for coaching, without being in a place of having no dollars and no idea how we would possibly pay for it and choosing to say, I'm willing to invest this in myself because I cannot do this on my own. And my only option is to put it on a credit card. But if I don't put it on a credit card, the answer is written on the wall what the alternative is, right? The alternative was we were going to get divorced. We were fighting all the time. There was so much tension in our marriage, we could not handle it. We were going to file bankruptcy. We were going to have to sell the house and relocate where we were living and how our lives looked and what was happening with our children. And those options were far more severe than putting some coaching on a credit card and seeing if someone who had expertise in this area could help us to turn it around. I really was bought in within the first few months of coaching. After the first 18 months or two years of like really hard work, cause it was not easy, but we were able to pay off over $85,000 worth of debt. And we have never looked back. So I really knew by this point that this was the missing piece of the equation. Like what I was experiencing, this new knowledge that I had, it felt like a superpower. I was like, oh my God, I went to college for nine years. I have a doctorate degree and no one ever talked to me about this. This is the missing piece of our education. And I knew I needed to help other people with it. I was shouting from the rooftops, telling everyone that would listen that financial coaching would literally change their lives. And of course, not everyone wants to hear that, but I was so excited about sharing it with people. And what we learned through financial coaching changed 
everything about where we're at in life right now, the path that we were on. So I wanted to share some of those things because I do think it's important to think about the impact that our work makes in the lives of our clients. And I am living proof of it because I've gone through it myself. My husband decided to pursue his long time career of becoming a teacher, a dream that he had been denying for over a decade because he kept telling himself, teachers don't make enough money to be successful. I need to make six figures. How will my family survive without it? I have this degree in IT. I need to keep pursuing this and using it. And he was miserable, miserable in the process with this desire. Once we learned how to manage our money, it was so simple to make the change for ourselves and for our family that he could take a dramatic pay decrease and follow his dream, really, like his heart and his passion was for teaching. And he was able to do that all because we turned everything around with our money and learned to look at it very, very differently. Of course, I left my career as a clinical pharmacist. Thank God I hated it. And I joined the team at Fiscal Fitness. Kelsa and I had joked for years after I started coaching with her and we would say, whenever you're ready to hire a coach, I'm ready to join you. I am meant to do this. I want to do this. I was you know, like I said, helping everyone that I knew on the side, telling them all about financial coaching and what I had learned. And we would joke and she would laugh and say, ha ha ha, I'm never going to hire another coach or train another coach. And now look at what she does all day long. So when she was finally ready to bring someone onto her team in 2017 and made me the offer, I jumped at it and joined Fiscal Fitness. The skills that we learned with money through financial coaching truly have made it possible for both of us to pursue our dreams, to change careers, to enjoy life in an entirely different way. We have not carried a balance on credit cards ever since. We got those cards paid off and now use them as a tool, but no longer as a place that we pay interest or carry debt. And it is wonderful and liberating in a whole different way of life. Uh, We're able to invest in our futures in a much better way. Before we were doing nothing to plan for retirement or save for our futures. And now we aggressively are able to do that and still feel really great about it. Um, I mean, just so many things. And just overall, my mindset about money and our lives and the possibilities that are available to us have totally changed and are completely unrecognizable today compared to how they were a decade ago prior to going through financial coaching and living in a place where we were really on the brink of collapse. And so (laughs) when I hear coaches say that they feel badly for offering coaching to someone who doesn't have any money or that they would never allow someone to put coaching on a credit card, I can't help but think how different my life would be today if Kelsa had taken that same approach with me. What if she didn't offer us coaching because she felt badly that we were so broke? What if she thought that it was unethical for us to put it on a credit card and would not accept that as a form of payment? We never would have learned the skills that we have today. You know, it would have changed our lives in uh, just devastating ways from where I can see that we were on the path to heading. And her offering coaching and not judging or deciding for herself whether or not we could afford it, right? We're not judging how we paid for it. It really allowed us to turn everything around. And I will forever be so grateful for that. And for the fact that at Fiscal Fitness, this will always be our philosophy with our clients. Investing in myself in that moment 10 years ago completely catapulted my life in amazing ways that I could never have anticipated and have yet to fully see the full results of, right? I'm like living it right now and it just keeps getting better and better every year. And it's all a result of that pivotal moment in my life. And this is really what your coaching can do for your clients. So I want you to hold on to that belief and carry that with you. And I hope that my story helps you to give, you know, give yourself a new perspective or way of looking at things. 
So as with every episode, we always like to end with a reflection question because coaching is all about figuring out what you think about something and how it's impacting you and the actions that you take. So really in order to honor the coaching philosophy, we want to end every episode with a question for you to reflect upon for yourself. And the purpose is really for you to deepen your awareness and gain clarity on the topic of each episode. So this really does create an opportunity for you to share your thoughts um, with us and with other financial coaches. And we want to really keep this discussion going. So we would love to hear from all of you. If you're watching on YouTube, please drop a comment with your answer to today's question, or you can always join the community in our uh, or the conversation in our community of financial coaches on Facebook at Financial Coaches Unite. So if you're not already a member of the group, head on over and request to join. So your reflection question for this week that I want you to think about, and I really, really want you to reflect on this and consider it. I want you to ask yourself, do I shy away from offering coaching to someone because I believe they can't afford it or shouldn't pay for it? really want you to ask yourself that. Do I shy away from that? Do I feel badly offering coaching because I can see that they're broke? Do I judge that and decide for them that they should not have this help? And if you do shy away from it, I want you to think about will this episode from today change the way that you think about this? I really would love to know. I would love to know if this gives you a different perspective or lens to think through. So please do share. Um, and Thank you for joining today. Uh, for our next episode, I am going to be diving into sharing with you how to talk about what you do as a financial coach. This is a place that I see so many coaches get really in their heads. They feel like they don't know how to talk about what it is that they do when they go networking or in their social media marketing or even just talking to their friends and family. So we're going to be diving in and breaking this down to help you have better conversations and talk about what you do. Uh, I truly believe that financial coaching is the best and most rewarding way to make a living. And I love what I do. If you cannot tell, if you're ready to learn and see more about how to become a profitable and successful financial coach, you're going to want to check us out over at financialcoachacademy.com. You can learn more about all of our online courses, free trainings, and our live events. And as always, we love hearing from you. So if you have questions for the Financial Coach Academy podcast, you can email us at financialcoachacademy.com forward slash podcast. Submit any questions or comments there. And if you love this podcast, please do subscribe and leave us a review. It will mean the world to us. And I will see you next week.